So, it has literally just hit midnight. Um, I am getting ready to go skate. I'm extremely exhausted, but for some reason, I'm getting ready and I'm going inside after taking a quick stretch. And what do I see? Lightning, beautiful lightning, mind you. I mean, lightning that's, you can you can almost trace it with a, with a pencil, right? The lightning did one of these moves in the background and went and it was like, and it froze almost to say, hey, take a look at me, look look who's here. So I'm saying to myself, shit, if this is, uh, which direction is north here? So I, I'm pretty sure, all right, so LaGuardia Airport is behind us, right? That's Queens, we're in the Bronx, we're in Soundview. That direction, according to the compass, uh, I'm not too certain. So yeah, more or less, that is south. South is behind us. North is uh, where the lightning's coming from. I have not yet checked the weather report, but I'm considering, I still am considering venturing out, even though I'm not doing underground spots. I'm just really looking at um, exterior outdoor spots, but I do still enjoy being in nature and being one with nature. And being indoors all day to me is, just no way for any human to live. So I need my my outdoor field time, my survey time, my skate time, my selfie time. So yeah, the lightning, I, I don't think we're getting any great shots now simply because um, I think the cloud coverage has shifted, but I'm gonna take a quick break. Um, I'm gonna take a quick break determine if it is in fact going to rain everywhere or if it's going to be delayed in certain boroughs, particularly Queens and Lower Manhattan. Um, but most likely I'm going to venture out regardless. I enjoy riding the trains and reading on the trains and seeing just all of the nightlife that NYC has to offer. It gives me context and perspective from the days of partying to the days of COVID where I would be doing courier messenger work and to now, which is a little bit eerie, honestly, you know. The city is not quite the same as it has been since COVID. Gave you guys a quick time check, not sure if you can see it.
No Balenciaga! Nice. Oh, Balenciaga. Nah. <sighs> Look at these perfectly designed shoes. Easy, easy, easy. Just dumped over jump. Kanye knew what he was doing. Also skate is these benches. Yep. I think if you watch Urban Royalty, you'll see Alex Nunez skating the benches on, I don't know, I think it was the E-Train. The E-Train to Jamaica. Jamaica. Do another cut, another take for that entire bit. So yeah, this is Morris Ave. And yeah, you can skate these fucking trains too. Quick time check. 110, it looks like. And I'm gonna shoot everything landscape 169. I think I'm shooting HD 60. Not 4K that's capable because I want to make my life easier for the editing process, but I'll give you guys an update maybe when I get to something like 59th Street. Yeah, I think 59th Street's fair. Alright. Fancy wood engraved with the light on top. Man, Astoria Projects is looking fabuloso. I see a basketball in the grass. Oh, time check by the way, it's three, almost 3.15. And the reason it's so late is because I took, so I took the six train to 125th. The six train's running in sections to 125th. Then I got off at 59th for the N or the Q to Astoria or the N or R or whatever to Astoria or W. And that's not running at 59th. So I had to go back and wait for the four or five or six to 42nd Street cats the 7 train from Grand Central take the 7 train to I took the 7 train where? I took the 7 train to Queensborough Plaza I believe or Queensborough oh, they finally opened up the other side so here we go here are the courts finally opened up the other side and it looks lit as hell this is obviously the better court on this side these are the ledges. You can see how this, yeah, like you see what I mean? Like 
Look at how much room you have after the hoop, after the rim, versus what you have on this side. It's almost like they had an afterthought and redesigned it. This one also can double, I guess, for volleyball or maybe tennis. But yeah, these are the ledges. These are the crazy, crazy ledges. Um, like I said in the beginning, I'm super tired. But something is like, something's telling me to go get it. I don't know how much longer I got with these, with these fetuses. And all of these injuries keep adding up. So I'm taking advantage of everything I can while I still got some health. bad. Juicy as fuck. Anyways. If skating is a martial art, and it is, right? Martial art, martial law, military, war, fighting the powers that be. I'm trying to skate. You see. Anyways, quick little freestyle, little backstory, but... If it's a martial art, right? When you think of karate, kung fu, jujitsu, any of these these things, they teach you left and right. They never teach you one side only. So my discipline when I started aggressive inline roller skating was to do everything left and right. I didn't know for sure which is what. I'm also a left-hander on pen and paper, but my right foot and right side is stronger physically. So. I always do left and right with skating and I think both aggressive inline roller skating, skateboarding, roller skating, and any of these other sports disciplines, basketball, you name it, 
should teach you that sort of principle. When you play tennis or handball, you do left and right. When you're kicking a football or soccer ball, I should say really, you know, football, um, not American football, you use left and right. And I think baseball could take some cues from this where as kids are young and learning the sport, they should both bat and learn to pitch left and right. So anyways, I'm gonna finish this, you know, some of this mango and I'm gonna basically do the drills that I do or that I used, you know, almost basically 20 years ago when I started learning how to skate. And that was, I would break every trick down or every kind of thing, I would break it down into six basic maneuvers for the sole um, and for the groove. If you break it down into six different maneuvers, you've got one-footed grinds, machios, then you've got, so you've got, you've got machio, then you've got sole. Keeping that same position, you've got porn star. Then you've got acid. Then you've got measy. Then you've got mistrial. Anyways, try to stuff my face a little bit more here. And then, uh, this, yeah, this bottom half is looking a little sore and damaged. Benches and roller skating. Rollerblading, part four. Damn, this shit's slamming. Sounds like thunder. about all of this well easier said than done but I got a rag in my pocket that's not it I'm not too sure if this is actually going to slide. I mean, I mean, I think initially, even before I sanded it down, it had a little slide ability. But yeah, if you feel the top here, it's very rough. Feel down here, it'll, it'll be alright. It'll give it a nice breaking period.
All right, all right, all right. I'm not gonna waste too, too much time. Feels like the rain is coming, but I'm gonna just try to get into it first things first. Sticking with the mango everywhere, sticking with the practicing, uh, you know, disciplined thinking martial arts, right? You punch left, you punch right. You don't ever see a martial arts class where they're just punching right one handed. That being said, everything that I do with regards to aggressive inline skating, I purposely attempt every trick left and right and then determine which are my strengths so I can determine which are my weaknesses and then I work on the weaknesses um, and so forth. But yeah, typically I will start with soul tricks and I usually do the easiest to the hardest. Machio being one of the easiest that you can kind of just roll and kind of click your feet on and step on. It's a one-footed soul trick. So I go Machio, soul, and then I bring that foot back, corn star, then mistrial, I'm sorry, then Mizu, then acid, then uh, backside mistrial. So gravy, baby. Yeah, it's all gravy. What? Well, yeah. What's so up? What you doing tonight? I'm gonna shoot back around the way, and get myself ready, and um, I'm gonna take a walk and see if I snatch up like a little stuff on you. I got, I got this thing for Man. chicks lately. Yeah. Yeah. For anyone who's trying to start or learn aggressive inline, I recommend first you learn how to skate properly. I, I myself am not a perfect inline skater. I still have trouble looking over one shoulder. I still have trouble spinning in one direction. The way I turn to go fakey is even awkward, and when I turn to go back forward is awkward. But get those fundamentals down, and then once you get to the level where you can skate fast and stop quickly, that's when you start grinding. But before that, start stalling. Stall left, stall right. Even when you're in your shoes, get comfortable with that body memory, that the muscle memory, the body positioning. Think of it as yoga. Think of it as Tai Chi, right? You might be, like if you noticed, there was a point where I did an acid grind on the left foot and my wrist was in a certain position where the arm placement, like if this were gymnastics, I'd lose points. You know, just for that arm placement. So consider all of those things, the form, the control, the balance. That's all part of your style. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll probably keep this rolling and just do a different angle. Try to break, really break these in. This is genuinely the first time really grinding on these razors, right? Jeff Howard's, they're size 10 and a half with, uh, you know, my fit prime liner. Um, I think the cuff is from an SL boot, but so far so good. I had to actually heat mold these so that the toe area would be a little more raised because right here there's a lot of swelling on my foot still from my, um, from my January foot injury. And I'm riding flat, 60 millimeter flat, ground control frames and ground control wheels. I believe these are, oh yeah, this is a, a rollerblade buckle. I did not like the rollerblade buckle on the rollerblades because I felt like the plastic on the rollerblades was very rigid as is. And having the buckles also be metal and rigid meant that I couldn't open them 
and the Sunday stay open. They would constantly close and keep my foot confined. Um, these Razor Jeff Howards come with their own aluminum, you know, metal buckle. However, I swapped it. I did a lot of swapping with skates and variations in parts. So it just, it just so happened that to me, these are the best parts um, for me at the moment in terms of my size foot, the types of tricks I like to do, the types of skating I like to do. Um, I mean, I'm, you know, in the future, maybe I change my buckles, but I've had a lot of problems with buckles in the past where they break. So I definitely think aluminum is the way to go. I just feel like aluminum that's too rigid where the plastic it's I should say the actual receptacle and arm of the buckle are often too rigid on some skates I think razors has it down packed where it's a little flimsy and thin <sighs> aluminum buckle component right the, the ratchet component but the socket and receptacle I think should be a little bit more malleable <clears throat> all right let's uh Let's maybe put this guy back and just do a few more runs. I really just want to do some back royales and back fars. Those are my uh, go-to warm-up tricks in general. And maybe some, like, top soles. Gary, check. In all honesty, I'm satisfied that I've broken them in just a tad. 
I really needed to do that to get confidence in the boot itself, in the frames, in the wheels, knowing what I get stuck on, what I don't. And also knowing if this is something I can go straight to a, a rail spot and do top assets, you know. So I think I need a little bit more practice on some ledges. Preferably in the daytime or preferably when it's cool because this is perfect. But yeah, uh, maybe one more trick. I'll go slow. Well, it's crazy. I'm gonna say pack this shit up, but really what I mean is that I'm just gonna book it to the train before it starts really pouring. Oh, y'all still with us? All right, so y'all see the drizzle, right? Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle. We out this bitch. You're an alien. Yeah. Yo, they really got fresh vegetables everywhere, man. I'm talking spinach, cabbage. They doing it right in the soil. I think every city, every borough, every neighborhood is a key game to take notes, yeah. relax. Oh man, this is gonna be slippery. Oh yeah, it's about to come down. Oh my fucking foot kinda hurt me. Actually, this is where I need this the most. It's like a balance thing. I put the fucking piece away. Shit. No, baby, no, baby, no, baby. above us so it means this is not going to be a heavy rain at least not yet i just want to get out of this shield before i get stuck in it I really wanted to check out there the, the, hand, the straight handicap rails or the like mellow down rails they have over here. Not down rails, but it's like it's handicap mellow ish. But um, not in this weather. Not considering that I'm just breaking these in right now. And the freaks really do come out at night. Crazy slippery over here, man. I just opened up this section here, I thought it was pretty nice. They've actually got the track in some quote unquote native African colors. 
red, black, and red, black, and green like a Kenyan, like a Kenya flag, like a Kenyan flag. I'm trying to remember these fucking cannabis and kombata lyrics. Also, I found that carrying these heavy backpacks in the front are way better for the body and the spine. I don't know what they taught us. Who promoted some that other shit? But this, to me, is the way to go. This would be dope. There's like two little rails. We could easily build it on here. DIY this spot. I'll probably come back and DIY this shit. Gotta love it. Far besides the squeaking, which is commonplace with most razor skates, they're still pretty light, and I'm slipping in the, this moist condition. You know, I'm not really used to these small wheels. I say for the last couple of years, I've been mostly riding 84 millimeters. Oh, excuse me. And most recently, thanks to ground control and razors, I've been riding 110 millimeter. Pinky promise I'm honest I'm not. Pinky promise I'm honest I'm on it bombing I'm bopping I'm thinking gone it's gone and you gon' get gone with the garden and get the gone with the wind and you gon' think twice before you win I'm gon' roll dice with the twin I'm gon' pop pipes I'm gon' I'm gon' pop pipes for the win <laughs> Take it. Yeah, man, these little wheels is no fun. This shit fucking sucks. But yeah, I'm trying to think like, could you really get away with grinds and have the same kind of fun with like a top side trick? If I'm being honest, I never really liked ledges to begin with. And I didn't even really know you could skate ledges when I first started aggressive inline. I mean, I started stalling and practicing on ledges because I think people told me and I started figuring it out, but I was, I just always assumed it was just like rails. Cause in my, in my mind, I had this vision of a ramp with, with steel coping, even though I didn't really understand what any of it was, you know? It was just always rails. And even to this day, my favorite thing to skate is rails. I feel like inline skates were built and designed for rails. You know, the way aggressive skates are now compared to a skateboard. Skateboarders don't have the ease of grind the way we do on a on a curvy down kink up sideways triple rail they don't we do oh, this fucking shit slipping man it's giving my feet a workout though i don't mind I get on the sidewalk man a little bit more traction Try to take these fucking skates off and walk the rest. I'm starting to sweat under this hoodie. I 
I already got it, come on. It's too fucking hot. Five blocks with the hoodie on, wet, thinking that it was going to be pouring. I think I can make it to the train. Put the bag in the back. Having some pain in my foot. Right. 
hate to take these boots off and then see that I just missed one. So let's keep pushing, slow and steady. said revenge is like the sweetest joy next to get your pussy. And I'm like, boy, first of all, both of those feelings are very different. One is extremely egocentric. Revenge, someone did you wrong. It's like, that's perspective. I understand if someone like killed your sister, killed your child, and then you want to get revenge, it's like, I don't know. It's very negative thoughts. And getting pussy, to me, it's like, it's great, it's Chill. awesome. But if I don't really like the person involved and they not putting in the same amount of work that I'm putting in, then I don't even want to fucking talk to you. I don't even want to look at you. Like, if you don't have the same human decency with communication, like, yo, I'm done fuck. You can't be real with yourself and honest, and I don't want any parts of it. My other big issue with most women is that they don't come, like as a guy who prides myself on putting in work, I lays the motherfucking pipe. And I've been with too many women that are fucking lazy and don't do shit in bed. So for me, you are a dog. You are a no-no. You open the gate? Can you open the gate? So I can get on the train. Can you open the gate? All right. We're doing it like that, and now we're doing it like, like this. Like right the car first, he says. Yeah, chill. We did it like that, and now we did it like this.
shit feels so Call it a, a good morning. Honestly, I've been dying to get back out and skate since uh, since doing the, the subway stuff. But every little injury that I get, every little nick and, and bruise, it tends to hurt the joints. And things tend to swell up. And then I'm just like... But um, as I get more in tune with who Adonis is and how his body works, his blood works, I definitely could benefit from more spinach intake possibly more red meat i'm not sure i'm not really feeling eggs that much you know i'm watching how things go through my system even when i drink a lot of water when i stay active <clears throat> and the biggest setback that i have is when i eat too much food that sits in my stomach and weighs me down i've been eating a lot of pasta which i love but i eat too much and then it weighs me down i started switching to potatoes and they actually do they do all right. They don't really weigh me down. They're easier on the stomach. I can mix them in very well with um, turmeric powder. And I often use a lot of, not a lot of honey, but I use honey very often, uh, particularly in my pasta and my potatoes. You say potato. I say motherfucking. You say potato. I say shut your motherfucking mouth. Anyways, I'm tired. thing only goes up. I know y'all see we lost a lot of fucking soldiers. Some at war, some niggas was just disloyal and disrespectful and had to be dealt with. Some niggas was just disloyal and disrespectful and had to be dealt with. Just uh, from doing the foot walk, that's about 15 feet. I measured this many years ago, but I'll do a double check today. Just gonna rest my old bones and uh, charge up the phone. This gap is no joke. You're looking at 12 feet just to get to the edge of this ledge. Add another, you know, foot and change. That's like 13 feet. If you look at this from this angle, you'll see that the top platform or the top of the stair 
is almost the same height as it, so you're not jumping, you know, it's not like you're jumping down, you're jumping up just to clear this thing, and then let's say you clear it, you still have to be going fast enough so that you clear more than 13 feet, you also have to clear, let's say, 13, 14, 15, I would go as far as to say even 16 feet, so, booyakasha for anyone, really just, uh, uh, Billy O'Neill and Jesus Medina who has accomplished this unhumanly feat um, but uh, yeah no, I guess it's humanly but it's fucking nuts and this is the Vietnam Veterans Plaza so there was a point in my skate career where I think I read something in, in either BMAG or Daily Bread and it, it basically went, and it's an anonymous quote that I, I, I scribbled on the back of my notebooks and everything and I, it stuck with me almost forever. I think I, at some point in the last decade or two it faded out of, um, out of my nomenclature. But essentially the quote goes, it's not who we think we are that holds holds us back. It's who we think we're not, right? So it's not who we think we are that limits us. It's who we think we're not. So I caught myself one day when I was skating this spot because this spot is notorious in New York City for challenges, um, stunts, gaps, challies, you know, rails, kink rail. And I realized everyone had done something, you know, Bashi. Bashi, I think, rolled on one of these uh, concrete circular things to the rail, which is a feat in and of itself. Like I said, uh, Fish and Jesus Medina both gapped from this top of the, the stair here over this wall. Um, I think Sam Grimm and several others have like hit the bigger rail on that side. I know Jay, Jason Greendike, uh, I think maybe like front farved or, or gap to back royale or something on this giant, you know, high ass rail. Everyone skated the kink, everyone's done little gaps. And as I'm searching for my claim to fame, I stumble on this rail, right? This rail to gap. And I'm looking at it and I'm going in my head, wow, Alex Brosca would probably kill that, you know? So we're talking 2000. Somewhere between 2003, I would say somewhere between 02 and I would say it's probably happened in 03 because I completed this in my 03 REMS and to my knowledge, I'm, I'm, I am the first person to attempt it. I could be completely wrong. It could be clips of it elsewhere for maybe, you know, years prior. But I remember seeing it and going, I'm not going to wait for someone else to do this. I'm going to do it myself. And I use that quote as motivation. It's not who we think we are, it's who we think we're not, right? I, I was saying to myself, I'm not Alex Brosco, I can't do that. And I kept going, what the fuck am I talking about? I'm Adonis Taylor, I'm Ado. I do stunts. So then I broke the, the stunt down into simpler tasks, right? I go, okay, it's a straight rail with a slight gap over and a small wall, like not a huge drop. And I went, what can you do there, Adonis? Okay, you got a front side, maybe you got a Royale. Okay, now the second question. You got a front side or you got a Royale? How fast do you have to go and where are you getting that speed from? So at first I was studying it and I studied that I have to come from on this side here and book it, right? But after much review, I realized I, number one, don't need to go that fast. Number two, the approach is kind of weird, right? And that's when I, that's when I made a, a, a committed decision that I'm just going to do what I do best, which is try shit out. I love trying shit, and if it doesn't succeed, you try and try, and then you give up. But this was one of those where I knew failure was not an option because it was the goal of grinding this rail from this starting point to the small gap was more than doable in my realm. You know, this wasn't something that only Alex Broskow could do, only Fish could do. I actually then contacted Philip Suarez yes. from yes. Bushwick, and I think he came out and he did a back royale and gapped over. 
I then I think got Giannis to come out and skate it. I think John Mosugio may have skated it. I know in that uh, mind game video, Fish does a sweat stance, which I thought was dope because I think prior to that, no one had done a, uh, a soul based trick. And to sweaty it of all tricks, I think is pretty dope. I think prior to that, everyone had done groove tricks, right? So I did a Royale, Philip did a back Royale. I think Giannis did front farve. Um, I think he did front farve. He might have done back Royale as well. I feel like Giannis did front farve. He's that type of guy. But yeah, it's not such a huge challenge. So yeah, believe in yourself. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah. God. Fuck. Meditation may provide the answer.
outside of you. What happened back there? Yes. 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 About time. 